Today's episode is brought to you by 13, thur one three encom and you can pick yourself up a cool t-shirt, cool hat, cool beanie, a cool hoodie, whatever your flavor is, whatever your style is, 13 has got you covered with some of the coolest designs, the best fitting t-shirts, and also like probably some of the highest quality stuff that I've gotten. And I just love the people that are over there at 13. Check it out. They hook you guys up, you listeners, with a discount code. If you use the word CoreyCast, all one word, you can save yourself a little bit of money at the checkout. So go to our friend's website, thur13en.com, code word CoreyCast, and save yourself a little bit of money. And as always, thank you, 13, for being such a big sponsor of the podcast. Holy smokes, we did it episode 100 and you'll notice that things look just a little bit different i'm excited to announce that we have uh, in studio space to interview and do the podcast in person rather than over the computer i had my friend mike do the very first one because i mean come on he's my brother from another mother and he was a good little guinea pig a good test subject for me to figure out the equipment and the recording tools and i think we nailed it because i'm pretty proud of what we put together. When I look back on the library of a hundred episodes, it's full of different people with various backgrounds from small business owners to uh, therapists, to bakers, to dog trainers, to disc golf specialists. I mean, we have a wide range of cool people on this podcast. I'm a firm believer. If you listen to somebody talk about what they're passionate about, it's going to be contagious into your own life. So This podcast was kind of a way for me to give different people a positive platform to talk about the stuff that they really cared about. And I just want to say thanks for affording me that opportunity because without you listening every week, we would not now have an in-studio space for in-person podcasts. I'm just uh, super excited, very floored, and I cannot wait to share this episode with you because this is the next step of the Corycast. This is the next step of the podcast. And when I look back on the first episode I did with Shauna, my then boss, when I had a, just a crappy mic and was nervously asking her questions to now, it's just, it's something that I'm immensely proud of and gives me such a sense of accomplishment. This is like one of the greatest creative ventures I've been on. And uh, thank you for giving me that opportunity. So without further ado, here is my brother, Mike Spuges. One, two, three. It's not, <laughs> it's not, dude, episode 100. Isn't this cool? It's pretty cool. I it's... hope that when we do this, because this is the first time that we're doing this in person, I hope that it uh, it actually uh, works and the file doesn't get corrupted, because I have no idea if any. <laughs> and if it does, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> it's way less pressure. We didn't get... Tony Hawk in studio today. <laughs> it's all good. Isn't it cool? It's kind of a cool setup. I got the whole freaking lava lamp. We got we got it hooked up in the office, so now we can do this like in person. It's beautiful. Yeah, we need some more wall hangings, some a little bit yeah. of this and that, but I don't have. We're much, off to a great start. There's not very much like characters in this office for me. There's, I, Ashton's painted as a beautiful tree. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. One picture, on the only picture hanging, except for Danny DeVito with a rum ham in his hands. <laughs> that also something you might want to include in frame somewhere. So, like Danny, maybe right here, in front could. of the lava lamp. I probably could. Honestly, it's not a bad idea. It just still needs. Uh, I don't know. Only three weeks on the job. I'm still, still trying to get my bearings right. Still trying to do my thing. But what do you think so far of the setup? It looks great looks great and i the best thing is i think it's working (laughs) yeah we're off to i think we're off to a great start here i see lines moving tell me about the wars which ones two wars (laughs) two wars it's always sunny philadelphia i don't really remember that oh when they started doing their podcast oh Uh, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. how are you looking baldur's gate by the way you know why is that your game of the year it's 
I already finished it. So you I've, finished it? Oh yeah. Oh respect. Finished it and you know I started a second playthrough, but then you know I'm slowing down a little on that. It's, I feel like it's just uh, I don't know. It's a very unique game, the likes of which have never really been tried before at that at that to that extent at least. Have you played Divinity Sin? I've never played it. I would. I actually feel like I should play that. Yeah. No, I feel like that's and you could probably get it on sale for like five bucks. I think I think you would love it because it's still the same. It still like plays the same. You still have a group. Yeah, it's way less hand holding. I mean, did, not that. Did you you played that then? Yeah, and to be honest, I think I'm a little bit of a dum dum, so I have a hard time, really like learning how it how it works and stuff. Yeah, I feel like the uh, Dungeons and Dragons lore was easy to like rope me into yeah. Baldur's Gate, but now that I like understand the mechanics of like how that game works like it probably would be fun to play some divinity sin what's been your go-to party oh i was like are we still talking about Baldur's gate or like yeah i was um yeah i don't know i i switched it up but i think uh the melee class is a pretty strong in that game barbarian fighters uh paladins i had a wizard the whole time because i was wizard 100 percent of the time that was that was my character and it's cool. I think wizards were pretty helpful, like out of combat, but in combat they felt a little l- less reliable, like round around. Uh, Especially when you're missing a, a spell. Yeah, even and it would be very specific, like when fireballs could land big, because they were enemies are pretty good about like spreading out or being near you or something like that. So, and they would get silenced a lot. So then you can't use any spells as a wizard. Like there's uh. a lot of like things that made wizards a little tough to use. A lot of people counterspelling and stuff like that. But when but, you play in D&D, I feel like they're so they're so powerful. Maybe not in the beginning levels, but I feel like in Dungeons and Dragons level 4 or 5 is when they really start to pick up their power. Yeah, I think I think out of combat in both systems, wizards are uh, pretty handy to have. You know, you get a lot of like speak with animals and I, I could fall down a cliff and not take any damage where it's like you don't you just don't have that kind of like utility out of other mm. other things so they're nice to have in that sense but sometimes combat it's all about just big numbers you know especially yeah. in the Baldur's Gate but yeah is there so your ideal party team has been what makeup you know a wizard yeah so I had a wizard a fighter for a long time it was wizard fighter barbarian and a cleric so it was like a lot of melee stuff but it worked out pretty good having like a beefy front line and then wizard kind of poking away in the end mm-hmm. yeah I've been rolling with uh the rogue Asterion, uh Gale the wizard I'm playing a paladin and a shadow heart the cleric I feel like a paladin cleric mix is a very tanky and helpful mix, especially with all the healing that's going on. But just sometimes, uh, Asterion lets me down. Yeah, I mean, he can also win entire encounters by himself if you just like, like I had, I used him to basically break into a house and assassinate the people he had to without okay. ever getting caught. And like my whole party just stayed outside while he did it all himself because he's okay. just sneaking up (laughs) and then he's uh sneaking up on people and just letting it rip from was uh, he a a standard was he like a staple in your party no i i used him more in act three later on but i really liked uh carlac anyone who had multi-attack was like pretty handy honestly yeah multi and especially because you're just trying to do more damage like there's times where i was swarmed with spiders and it was hard to even like control the amount that was attacking me at one time. I was like, yeah. I was getting a little overwhelmed by the amount of them. Yeah, so in D&D and Baldur's Gate, it's all about action economy. It's like, how many times can you do a thing in your one round? And in D&D, they do a lot in the rules to like prevent you from being able to do a ton of things in your one round because you're meant to be playing with like eight people or not maybe not eight but uh, a lot of different people whereas Baldur's Gate they took a lot of those like very fine detail rules hey you can't do this these you can't do three attacks in a round and then also haste and do three more attacks with that Baldur's Gate got rid of a lot of that so there's a lot of ways in Baldur's Gate where it's like hey I already get three attacks I can haste get six attacks 
use a uh, potion of haste, get nine attacks, oh, yeah. use that, and it's like scaling in a way that you can't in D and D because they really tried to get you to not be able to do that stuff. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff like that. Because I think it just lends better in the video game than it yeah. would on a table setting. No one wants to sit through someone take nine hits while they're waiting to go. Yeah, like, it no could be a little much that. for sure. <laughs> but like, when you're playing a video game, it's just you, unless it's split screen. I think you can do split screen. Yeah, that, yeah. But, but there's, there's a lot of, and it's just some things are easier to track in a video game. There's a lot of like little differences that I think I'm actually pretty curious like how some of them would play out in uh, tabletop, but... I don't know. It's. It, I think it is a bit of a, like a, hey, when it's digitized and a video game can keep track of things and do the math behind the scenes, yep. changes a little bit of what you're capable of. But I don't know. I think there's some serious uh, crossover potential between like some of the stuff they tried out and the tabletop version. You know. What do you think is gonna be your next? When you said you started your next playthrough, are you doing like yeah, evil? Pro- I yeah, I started another one with just like a bard. And then I was messing around, but I do kind of want to try an evil one, like a full evil playthrough. The problem is it feels, like, terrible. It's like... Yeah, you feel really bad. You're like, I don't (laughs) actually want to, like, kill all these people, but, like, I guess, like, that's the character I'm being. So it is weird. It's like, yeah, you have to, like, fight against your uh, instincts on that one a lot, but... But, And it's hard, too, especially because we're not mean people and, and, like, (laughs) killing an entire village of people and being the responsible party for that stuff. Did you encounter the... There's, like, a squirrel where it's, like... No, I haven't encountered a squirrel squirrel yet. There's, like, a squirrel where it kind of is just chilling there, and you're, like, I feel like the squirrel's, like, trying to challenge me to, like, a turf battle. Like, Like, it's, like, it's, like, weirdly, like, aggressive. Like, hey, back off. And it's, like... You have the option, basically, to, like, hey, all right, like, it's the squirrel's territory. I'll respect that. Or you could, like, kick it. And, like, uh, I know someone who kicked it, and it's yeah. like, whoa, that never even yeah, right. crossed my... I would never... Like, yeah. that's, that's crazy. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I guess you could play that character where it's like, you are kicking the squirrels and right. not helping and the not people helping, and yeah. <laughs> I could never joining up with the bad guys. Like, that's, that's for it's sure. It's a game, and option. I would immediately feel guilty. For kicking the squirrel. I do, I do like appreciate though the um, amount of choice in the sense of like, like I couldn't even tell you what the goal of the game is because it depends on like with the goal of your character, your character going into it. Like, so what might be the end of the game for someone is like very different than another person based on like what you're doing. Uh, and I, I was when I, I'm, I'm currently kind of brainstorming ideas for, uh, I wouldn't call it a one shot that I'm playing for you guys, but like a sh- mini, a mini, mini little campaign. campaign. How it, many sessions in your head do you feel like we're going to play? You know, it depends because I know how we like to do things and like sometimes a tiny little Thinking. snippet of something can turn into like three sessions just yeah. in us, like expanding on like a role play scenario so i don't i would my goal with it was like like five to seven probably but i could see it being like plus or minus two or something are you ready to give away like story beats Uh, to it or are you trying to keep it under your lid mm, i'll keep it under the lid for now but like it's pretty like classic adventure setting type stuff like i would say pretty much any character would work in it but what what I was kind of like uh, thinking about there was how like I'm kind of inspired by Baldur's Gate's ability to like really give you the choice to do things. It's like you don't have to always, hey, you need to side with this person and fight the bad guy and complete and save the day. It's more just like, hey, here's these things happening, and like you need to choose like how you're responding to that, right? Uh, and I, I, I'm kind of trying to take a little bit of that, like think about more, Hey, what's, what's going on in this situation? And then like, how are the different ways that you might, there might be like four or five different ways of going about like yeah. going about how you want to solve it de- depending on what your goals are. But yeah, that's kind of where my head's been at yeah, thinking about that kind of stuff. It's kind of cool. Cause like we finished curse of straw, which was like what, a year and a half. Campaign, right? It felt like it was like two years. Maybe it was a yeah, like a year and a half. Yeah, Uh, yeah. So now we finish up that. We're like trying to build our own, so we can take a little bit of a break, right? 
and like with mine i had the idea from uh uh avenger zone uh did the rockport right the murder mystery but and I like the idea of being on a train, and here I am again copying something that's on Adventure Zone. Well, but like the setting is cool, so now I'm like, how can I make the setting uh, my own? And I've always felt into the trap when I've written my my one shots. I always feel like I over plan, mm. and this time I'm taking an exaggerated opposite. I have Act One, Two, Three, Four. Those are I'm I'm thinking we can go about four episodes. And Act One just outlines what the goals are and objectives are. The same with two, three, four. Yeah. And it leads up to something. But how you guys get there, I'm literally trying to think up on on the fly. Like it's gonna be more in improv rather than me being ready. So it either will be really cool or it's gonna be terrible and I won't be prepared. <laughs> nah, I think it'll be pretty cool. <laughs> it's it, but I just feel like I always over plan. Do you know what I mean? Like, I always feel like I'm over the top when my planning, and I'm like, maybe this time we'll try something different and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely a, uh, uh, like a line that everyone has to draw for themselves. I, I kind of feel like the more I think about these things, like, in the in the lead up, like, the more ready I am. Even if it, I think some people, like, they find it over planning. And I definitely think, uh, you can easily fall into that where it's like you want everything to go within your X, Y, or Z ways you're thinking about right. it for sure. But I, I just, I like when I'm thinking about it, uh, I kind of like just thinking about like what's happening in this world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like what, what is like, that's where, where my head's at, where I feel like I could spend an infinite amount of time. It's like, Hey, like what's happening in this tavern and like, who's, who might be in there and, Who's, Are you like jotting this stuff down? Or well, see, like... yeah, this is this is where we come to what I was up to last night with Chat GPT. So, like before that, I was I, I had like a Google Doc where I'm just like writing things down. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hey, there's this character who might like be able to help with these things, or this right. person could do this, or there's this area. But it was really interesting to like I I opened up Chat GPT, just the free edition, which is like not really intended for more creative processes. Like that's what they want you to it's pay the, the pro. Yeah. yeah the 4.0 for, for higher level thinking, but it's like, uh, it's still, I found was very helpful. at just like brainstorming. I basically like wrote out like a rough, like, Hey, this is like an idea I had for a, a, a adventure and like, Hey, like maybe we can work, work out like fleshing out some details. And I kind of like wrote it, to like the, some of the ideas I had and it it was able to be like all right well some things we might want to think about are these things and I'm like yeah I agree that's what I was like here to talk about yeah, right. and it's cool because it almost like generates notes for you so like laid out all these different things and it's like all right yeah let's talk about each one of those step by step and it was really cool like now when you're putting these prompts into chat gpt you have to be like very specific so like when you're putting it the ideas in how are you like trying to refine it so you get what you're looking for? Yeah, dude, it that's what's like that might be weird, hard to do without it, giving it away. No, I, yeah, I know I, that is part of it. Like, I don't want to tell you exactly like what I was writing about, but it is really interesting that it's like something, something of like an art form. It's like you're like going like fishing for like useful like our, our quote unquote artificial like intelligence, uh, but. Yeah, I, if it doesn't exactly give you what you're looking for, you kind of like rephrase things. But it, the, the interesting thing is like it knows what you were like just talking about. So it's able to kind of like take that last chunk of everything we learned and it like spit back at me. So I know that it relatively understood something. And then I'm like, yeah, well, remember this forest you were talking about earlier? Like, let's expand upon that. And like, what maybe like, what are some things going on in here? And it's like, well, I didn't really like the first the first one and the fourth one but like let's talk about two three and five like those right. are pretty cool and then like you expand on those and it's like yeah i agree two three and five those were my better ideas like let's talk about <laughs> it. and it's just like a lot of these ideas i had went from being like vague hey I, they could probably do this at some point to like oh wow yeah like that's actually like a good like 
co- I concretely know a lot more details now. Oh, uh, okay, that's it, cool. Like, even if like you're like, oh, there should probably be a tavern in my town somewhere, but I don't want to spend like a ton of time thinking of every. De- you could just be like, hey. Generate a tavern that would make sense in the context of like the story that we've been creating together And it's like yeah, I could do that and then it'll just give you like a bunch of like little things like I wouldn't have really thought to add those like little uh, Tidbits of information, but like that helps me Contextualize the world. Maybe they they probably won't even ask about that or whatever, but right. it's cool to like have that Ready. Uh, yeah, and have yeah. that like ready to go. Yeah, and yeah. see that's where I waste my time is because I'm thinking about all this extra stuff that I'm not yeah. probably gonna use and yeah. it's nice to have that resource who would have thought to use it for D D though like that's kind of cool uh yeah i just watched some video of a guy who was doing something similar and i was like yeah that's a good idea uh but i i really i don't i feel like i should stress that it's a probably a bad idea to just be like hey create something for me and then just try to run with it like as if it's like a as it's, it's concrete like a, yeah like it's all. not a actual writer but it is really good at like Hey, can you create five uh, like merchant NPCs that like might be in the town and like why they might have come to this town? And it's like, yeah, here's this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And like the creativity where it can you can literally just be like, hey, actually create three million of them. And it's like, yeah, no problem. I could do three million of yeah, them. There you go. Like the, the use you're gonna find something useful to mixed in there somewhere that you yeah. can like pull from. And I, that's what I felt like was very helpful. And if you don't like a detail, you can just swap it out with something else. Right. You know what I mean? Wow. But That's cool. The guy I saw, he was actually, like, going as far as, like, hey, can you recommend some, like, uh, difficulty checks on, like, a history check, like, different levels of if they got a 5, a 10, a 15, like, what yeah, they I might know. Yeah, I have a hard know. time. Yeah, like, because stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. It does take, like, pretty, like, creative writing to, like, think of good things to say in and, those like, contexts. And, like, what is the difference between a 12 and a 15? Yeah, right? yeah, but that's what was interesting is this guy was like, hey, like now that we have like this established, maybe like what are some different levels of history checks? And it would like recommend some things. And it's like, yeah, it's not perfect, but I'll tweak this, and I actually like that. Oh, what was that little guy? Yeah, I think that was my, that was my email. Oh, okay. It just went off. Not a deal. Let's just check um, it. You want to do it? Let's, let's turn, let's, let's turn it to the camera. Turn it to the camera. This is, uh, it, it's really cool, just the... Chat GPT is all because it's also doing a lot in the real estate. Oh, really? Too. It's also, yeah. People are using it to generate content idea. I mean, just like in really in any sector. Mm. But people are even using it to write property descriptions, which is like admittedly my hardest thing about my job is I always have a hard time typing out a description. And I tried it with my newest uh, listing on Siena, and I just felt like it just mumbled a bunch of crap that yeah. didn't make sense. But mm. I don't think I was just being as specific as I should have been with the house. Yeah, I think also people treat it like it's like a god to you could like pray to yeah. and like that it'll create a magical right. thing for you. And it's like that's not necessarily the case. Because you have to uh, work and kind of refine what you're asking and kind of be very yeah. poignant about what you're and asking. And even then, like I would think that like human intervention is probably going to be useful because right. there's some fair housing laws that breaks when, when yeah. he writes the description it's like yeah. perfect for families and it's like oh chat gpt you can't put family oh, okay. yeah see yeah, yeah yeah uh it also is like it's hard to comprehend like what this thing is exactly but it's ultimately just like a like a predictive text to predictive text algorithm exactly right. like your phone is where it's like I want to go home to the home to the store. Yeah, yeah right. And, and it's just like it's a gonna miss. Yeah, yes. It doesn't well it doesn't know what it's saying really. Mm-hmm. Like it might seem like it does, but it's just using words to like s- come up with something like on the spot. It's like creating an illusion of words like in front of your eyes almost. Yeah. Uh What was the remember uh AOL Instant Messenger had a thing? There was a a bot you would talk to it was like chatter bot or something it was like do you remember mm. what it was called I, but it was like the same idea you could have a conversation yeah, with yeah. It. i remember being like 12 thinking that was cool and, and it was now just it's very like, like yeah it was kind of like rigid beginner and like, alexa type yeah like, exactly how's yeah. it going pretty good you pretty wow good. whoa the machines are taking <laughs> over exactly and now we have it where like chat gpt is like 
able to write entire scripts on things and mm-hmm. like i mean that's that's what the real estate world right now is is touting about chat gpt is use it for content use it for property listing use it for ideas on how to market use it for x y and z but you're right it's like a lot of people are like bow to yeah. me master Ooh. yeah you know like because that's what it excels at is the uh, amount of content it could generate like you could be like give me thirty eight thousand ideas on a video i can make about real estate and mm-hmm. it will like have to come up with all that so it, it is like it just has no just like a dragon ball z android it has no exhaustion to it you wow. could just keep keep going at infinity you stupid machine <laughs> stupid machine yeah uh, but yeah ultimately you probably want to be. Where do you, you know, think it's going to go from here? The fact that I can do all of this, hey, like, man. where do you see Chat GPT being in ten years? What is that going to look like? Well, Chat GPT commercials, like commercials filmed and shot, like Eric. Yeah, that was like Eric wild. sent us. Like that was pretty wild. That was crazy. Um, you know, like it seems like every uh, avenue that AI touches, like it takes the same path, and it's like the same path that it took when it met the chess world and like that was like such a big like conversation it was like it didn't just instantly beat grandmasters it was ai moves plus human intervention plus like humans like interpreting ai and then them working together that was able to beat grandmasters but eventually ai could just beat anyone and it's like a bad idea to go against it um and same thing with like go. It's like in in that in between. Oh, go is the other. Yeah, is the harder version yeah. of chess. Same thing with StarCraft. Um, and and in that in between stage where it's like human and AI working together, they call that like the centaur phase, where it's like oh. the centaurs you, currently okay. like the best. <laughs> and like that's definitely where we're at with like Chat GPT right now. Is like you're in the centaur phase where you want your human mind to be like processing what it's saying and probably like rewording it in a lot of ways, but like taking it as useful, uh, like helpful bits of supporting information or like whatever, but, and just trying to make it useful, like just make it beneficial to have value to it. uh, I mean, I mean, it's crazy what it, what it can do and what it does for people. It is pretty wild. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen some people try to like, automate like entire businesses on it and stuff like that and yeah. i think it ends up being a lot more complicated than people and I think i feel and like people can smell it you know like when you read yeah, something sure. that's like typed out by ai you're like yeah uh, something's fishy speaking with of that sentence structure how uh, how familiar are you with like there's entire youtube channels that are like ai generated content there's oh. Not at all. I feel like 99% of articles are like AI generated. Maybe that's an exaggerated number. But if you look up like a video game article, like, hey, how do I find this in this game? Mm -hmm. You'll get like this weird website where it's like, to find this in this game, you'll want to do this. And it's like, why is something missing here? And those are like always yeah. AI generated. Yep. It's you're like, like, where's it by? You look at the end, you're just, like nobody says that no, there's yep. no author to this page. <laughs> yeah. What is this? Scrolling and you're like, when are you gonna like say the thing? Like you're not like saying it, yeah. you're just like re-jumbling words <laughs> around. Like what is 2023 the- <laughs> Nintendo Zelda Tears yeah. of the Kingdom yeah. was manufactured <laughs> yeah. and brought by Nintendo, and you're looking to find where yes. the Acroca Den is. Number 431 oh, is deep within the waterfall, and the waterfall is actually located and is actually fake. And you're like, what? And then it just kind of ends. Cut to and the you're chase. Like, Did you ever even answer it? Or? You didn't answer the question, man. Yeah, so that's very common. I didn't um, know there was AI generated YouTube yeah, channels. Yeah, just all content. Well, for it, it's it's like a uh, AI writes. I'm sure like a person is involved like in the uploading process or this editing or something. But it like uploads a digital script, and then there's also like an AI voice that like reads it. So like Whoa. their human involvement is very little. And like you might not even realize like that's what you're listening to or yeah. like, watching really. But yeah, I, I saw one of those the other day. It was pretty weird. Whoa. It's weird. The future is wild. It's going to be all AI content. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. AI. The creator space is gone. And it's also like, it's upsetting a lot of artists too. Cause like you have the, 
the it's not chat gpt artist mid journey mid journey that's what it is yeah you have that where you could have works of art created in seconds it's a very weird sore subject right now yeah in the yeah, creative space it is really yeah it's uh i definitely understand like a lot of the uh reservations about uh especially like mid journey like they literally, their data set comes from what should have been like an illegal source. Like they, they basically got their data set for pennies on the dollar from, I think by like filing bankruptcy or something like that. And like a weird, or it was, it was, you know, it was because they said they were like a nonprofit or something like that. Mm. And they were able to like acquire these like assets for free instead of like paying the artists. Oh, so there's some so sketchy it, stuff. Going definitely on. sketchy stuff as far as like how they built the app. But I think, I do think, I don't know. There's like a weird like hatred for all things AI yeah. sometimes that I think is like a little bit unwarranted. It's a little bit like, it's a mix though, because I feel like you can see both sides. Yeah. Right. But there's, there's a little bit of the like, Hey, the car is evil because it's killing the horse involvement mm -hmm. yeah. of it all. Like the um, internet, like when the internet was brought around. This, yeah. It was like people were like, this is great. We're all going to connect worldwide. And other people are like, this is terrible. Yeah. This is terrible. It's a good example. This is an example, right? So in the real estate world before the internet existed, the MLS existed in a book. Mm -hmm. You would get a phone book every other week and you would have the listings in a book that you would flip through. And then when it went to the computer, there were so many agents that were pissed and upset. This will the, never work. This will never work. This will never be a thing. Yeah. The book is the way to go. This, the book is the, is the, and it eventually led us to the MLS being completely online. Could you imagine only looking at a house and deciding if you want to see it from one black and white photo on the cut, like the front of the house. That's yeah. what you decide if you want to see it or not. It's weird. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> it's so strange to me. Different uh, times. Yeah. But anytime um, there's a disruptor brought in, right, it's everybody gets a little like. <sighs> yeah. I, I think the big hang up is like if you're using that art for commercial use yourself, mm, right. like that seems pretty questionable, especially because you're like taking that from a job that could have been going to an actual artist. Uh, one very creative use of uh, Mid Journey I saw recently, I've been watching a lot of these like build videos, like. A lot of times it's like epoxy resin, like river tables oh, yeah. or just like different things like that. Like there's a lot of cool YouTube channels out there that make like really cool stuff. And I saw this guy who made like this interesting table that was supposed to be based off of like a cave. Like it's supposed to look like a cave. He made it like two, like a top and a bottom that almost look stalactite -y. And the, the sides he used like a very clear like a sheet of epoxy to, to so it looks almost like you're like looking into a cave. Right. He fed that image. Well, he had a, a friend who was better with this stuff, fed that image and basically like, like feed it some prompts to mid journey and to basically be like, Hey, make a cooler, more elaborate, uh, cave table. Like use, use roughly what I did and try to make it like way better. And then mid journey did. And it like added like a actual like lake on top. And oh. then like, but he w and then the new video was him taking Mid Journey's design and trying his best to, to recreate it. that. It and must it have been hard. Out, yeah, it was it was it was like so much work. But like yeah. that's like what they do is just make like insane things and try to like bring them to life. And it was like it came out so cool. Yeah. And like there's something about it where it was like, dude, no person would have ever like tried to be that ambitious with just like a yeah. coffee table. But <laughs> because like it created such an elaborate, weird design that like people don't think in terms of that for like furniture, yeah. really. Like it was able to create something really awesome. Then he used it to like make something really creative. Yeah, it's almost like he's just using it as like a blueprint to yeah. lift off from, yeah. from something, which is probably I don't know. In my opinion, I feel like that's just a way better way to go about it. Like using it as a, a lift off point for your ideas, right? Like content. Like I need to. Can you write five pieces of real estate content for me? Yeah. have it done in a jiffy you know i feel like that's the way to do it and still have that i'm creating it right you're just giving me the ideas and help me building that blueprint yeah and it's like people will definitely scoff at the idea that it's any form of creativity goes into like using it but there's like some some form of like it's a different definitely a very different and uh less impressive form of creativity than right. someone like 
painting a beautiful thing themselves. Yeah. But there is like something to like someone like there's some people out there who are like out there prompting away and creating some like wild like pulling some wild things out of the AI mind or whatever. Yeah. It can be fun to play with. I, yeah. I haven't really messed with it too much, but I just saw that recent thing, and I was like, yeah, that'll chat GPT might help me out with brainstorming it's some ideas. It's kind of cool. You're using it as a, a vehicle to help you kind of build your world a little bit with your D&D &D adventure. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's actually going to be kind of cool. Some of the stuff it's it, it suggested, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can really play with that. Mm. Like, I, I actually really like that, yeah. That's cool. Man, what a D&D &D is so much fun. I can't wait to play Hell yeah. I can't wait to show you guys what I've been cooking up. I'm excited and for that. Not not like cooking up like diving in hard, but like I have just I have my story beats laid out and I'm totally gonna be doing this improv more yeah. more improv and less like okay, they do this, I gotta do X, Y, yeah, and yeah. I have to do but I have the story beats which are important. How you get to the story beats, I don't know. We'll figure yeah. it out in the moment. But try not to pigeonhole you or corral you into anything but action happening on the train that that's for the objective. sure well i mean you definitely uh <laughs> you can definitely fall into the trap of railroading someone especially yeah. when you're literally putting them on a train track i know yeah i know i know yeah, yeah. <laughs> i hadn't really considered that but yeah. yeah um that could be an issue i i've been thinking about that too like i think the first time that i dm with you guys it was a little bit more like railroady that I wanted it to be because it, I was like so unfamiliar with DMing that and I was nervous, like, right? Like yeah, your first like, time, you're just like, I want thing. I want. I don't want to be caught with my pants down on this thing, yeah. you know. And then I think I've kind of like loosened the reins on that. But I think that comes down to like how you're thinking about the the prep too. Like yeah. I'm just thinking about things differently this time around. I Same. Think. That's that's what I I was like. Well, if I'm gonna do a homebrew then I want to do it different from what I've done before, just in terms of, it sounds crazy to say less prep work, but that's really, that's really what it comes down to. I'm not doing as much prep work and I'm going to just be in the moment and just try to improv my way through different, different yeah. scenes. And we'll just see how you get there with the story beats. How you get there is going to be totally up to you guys. Beautiful. I, I also am taking some uh, inspiration from the adventure zone and yeah, I'm taking inspiration from like twelve different things. Like, okay. well, so it's just I don't even. Number one source of information. Well, number one, actually, it comes from a one shot. Here's what I did. It's the most like American, probably like ignorant white man thing that you could do. <laughs> yeah. Is that I heard the title in rough synopsis of a one shot, and instead of reading it, I was like, oh, I could do something like that. <laughs> and it's like I could have just probably read it, and yeah, it would have been cool. But yeah. I was like that idea like the just the very like one sentence idea that i heard about that i was like yeah that could be fun That's and fun I, I i actually did end up reading it but like i i'm kind of taking it in a very different direction than that original one shot but then it's kind of a little bit of inspiration from adventure zone a little bit from Baldur's gate a little bit yeah it's funny it's like that it, the same thing happens for me but i get that inspiration from like literally the adventure zone being like we're doing an auction house yeah and i'm like oh my god doing it that's that's what led me to create the auction house for the dungeon donations this is the same thing murder on uh rockport rockport yeah, yeah. murder mystery uh that uh but i love the look it's so cool to put a train in a fantasy world like what does that look like what is this <laughs> yeah. like it, it's just a cool uh cool liftoff point and it also gives me a cool setting you know so it's not just like a dungeon it's not just mm -hmm. like a castle it's not just like a you know it's like is there auction houses in the fantasy world? Sometimes. I mean, why not? Sometimes why not? There is. You know, you know. What are why you wouldn't do? there be? Yeah. So I don't know, man. I'm I'm excited to show it to you guys, but also nervous to execute it because there's we got some cool ideas brewing. Hey, got man. some cool bre ideas brewing. Well, better get to executing soon because yeah. I'm ready to play. Yeah. Can you believe this is episode 100? Isn't that wild? This year? Yeah. Have you been recording this episode? whole time? Oh, shit. I didn't tell you? Oh, man. <laughs> we weren't supposed to talk about Baldur's Gate and D&D, &D, though, yeah. the whole time. It's okay. That's not really none of the world. It's, uh, whole, like I said in the beginning, hopefully this all works. I got the computer to the right. Hopefully when we're done, it's going to save it, and it's going to look okay, and hopefully that's going to look okay. We're so going to find out. If, if anyone's made it to the end of this podcast, I'd just like to give a quick shout-out 
Wait, I don't even know if we're at the end or if you're just bringing that up. No, I'm just bringing uh, it up. I mean, um, I did want to bring this up. That the shout out to Howard Hanna because literally yesterday I was trying to pull out into traffic sort of near my house. Uh, I can't remember that road over there. Uh, Genesee Street. It was very busy. I had to go over like two lanes. Yeah. A nice lady and a Howard Hanna <laughs> agreed to Howard Hanna Volkswagen. Oh. SUV. Oh, that's she, Shauna. She, oh, you know who it is? Yep. She let me in, and I was like, yes, shout out to Howard <laughs> Hannah. Because people like to be real stingy over there and not let people in. But yeah. she yeah, let that's... me get my Ponchitos and leave in peace. Oh, Shauna. <laughs> shout out to Shauna. So shout out to her. She has no idea how she hilarious no idea. is that. That's so funny. Yeah, man, um, it is, uh, it's cool. Shout out to Howard Hannah. Does because, she work here? Is... Yeah. She, oh, really? She used to be my old manager. <laughs> really? Yeah, oh. yeah she's in... Uh, uh, Manlius now, Manlius and Casanova. Mm. Um, she lives closer there. It made no sense for her to drive a half hour all the way here every day. You know, it was too much of a work. But yeah, no, really. Uh, we, I started this podcast because I when I started in this job, I didn't, I wasn't great at like talking one on one. Working in retail, the sheer amount of people I saw, I wanted to run and hide from everybody, and just like it was too much. Mm. at once and now it's like i'm still talking to people but it's it's less connections it's not like i'm not seeing 50 people in a day about a lawnmower it's like i'm talking to like five six clients in a day about how they're eventually going to need to buy a lawnmower for their new home exactly exactly yeah and like i was having i was like i'll start the podcast just so i can get better at talking to people just so i can get better at like holding a conversation because i have to do like social events and social mixer events and like i was at a a realtor event last night and like just trying to get better at like socializing and communicating with people yeah here we are episode 100 which is wild i thought i honestly thought i'd do it for like 20 episodes and just be done and how do you feel your skills is uh whether it's interpersonal communication or wow that was a crazy truck Uh, interpersonal communication or like public speak, how do you feel like that's that's grown since or because of the podcast? And uh, it definitely has gotten better for sure. Like, I feel like I can hold a conversation. Like, most episodes go for about an hour, there's like some that maybe go a little bit longer, but I can definitely do pretty well holding a conversation for at least an hour. And uh, I just feel more, I feel more comfortable. Like, I felt like I was just like, I would just kind of hold, be quiet and kind of awkward but now I, I don't know i just feel more comfortable when i'm in a social setting where i have to like intermingle with people and mix with people where before i would not yeah i mean most people don't think of that as like a skill but it's pretty much everything is it's yeah. like the more you do it the more the do more better good you get <laughs> the do more better good you get yes <laughs> Yes, that's true. Do more better, good you will get. More yes. good talking, and you get more good at talking. And more good at talking. And it's uh, went from uh, just doing a Google Meet audio only to audio and video mm. to now in person, which is wild. This is the what's, first uh, in person. What's one. your plan for like, are you going to continue to do all three, like depending on the guests? Like, in yeah, their d- needs, yeah. I, I like this if they're able to like i like i like having a place to like sit and chat because i think you just get more from the conversation but like uh rebecca mountain was the author who lives in canada she's public speaker so it doesn't make sense for her to fly down here to do a i don't have jre money you know what i mean she's got to she's got to i don't think those people will actually really get paid by those guys oh really I, i don't think so well, they gotta pay for their flight or hotel room. Oh, right? true, yeah, yeah. They true. gotta do something yes, like for that. For sure, right? for sure, for sure. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I just like the idea of having the space to do it, and then also like this is the start of like where I could do content. Like I have a nice mic, I have a nice setup where it's not only is it just us two, but I could do something where it's solo and talk. That is like a nice elevated space. Yeah, I feel like that's probably the trick for uh, successful real estate is being successful in real estate is just like putting out putting yourself out there as much as possible right actually i remember before the podcast at the very beginning of your real estate journey you telling me about a very um i don't know if i want to use the word disgruntled but just i don't know sort of a an old an older fellow who maybe wasn't you know the easiest guy to work with ever (laughs) and it was like you were 
just putting in your time then in like at the time it was pretty clear that you might not get anything out of it yeah but it's also because of that same mentality like that you are at where you're at you're at right now like you you could think about it like that guy he didn't he maybe never got you a dollar then but yeah. like he helped get you to like where you are in this office right now yeah, right. you know what i mean just yeah. because of that you've taken that mindset to the podcast and you've taken it to your like social media game and like how active you are with like finding people and stuff like that yeah it's a weird it's such a weird business like you just always have to put yourself out there and that dude i don't drink burger king coffee because of that guy <laughs> yeah that's fair i don't it, drink burger king coffee yeah. for other reasons yeah um, but burger king coffee is for men god dang it yeah sure <laughs> Men who like burnt coffee, dog. Burnt coffee, dude. You've never had a pour over from freaking Salt City dude, Cafe, dude. I, I saw this like TikTok that someone was like sharing on Twitter that was like some guy spending so much time making like the perfect cup yes. of coffee. Yes. And all the comments were like, bitch, my Starbucks, my Dunkin' Donuts tastes better than this, probably. What was that? And I'm watching it like, dude, that's probably great. Yeah. I bet that cup of coffee yep. is great. He, like, used <laughs> distilled water. Yeah. He, like, yeah, he added minerals. the coffee. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He has a thing to flatten out the coffee. Dude, yeah. People were making dude. fun of him, but I was like, dude, that probably turned out great, actually. Yeah. You tell uh, me, tell me that a, where I'm at. a drip coffee from Salt City Market tastes better than a Dunkin' Donuts coffee, you are out of your freaking mind if yeah. you say that Dunkin' is better. Yeah. I, I mean, I get it. It's, I feel like the people who like Dunkin', they really like like the caramel frap. The caramel swirl. frap. Uh, like, they yeah. have a very specific thing they like. I don't think they usually just mean, like, the beans, but I don't know. Uh, That's usually what I order when I go to Dunkin' but yeah. Donuts. Just the, bean, just the beans, please. Yeah, let me get the beans. Which is, like, weird because I, like, when I wake up in the morning, I do, like, a nice hot cup of baked beans but i usually like will will have my baked beans at like 10 a.m yeah for sure <laughs> you can't be doing that first thing <laughs> i just saw that video too of, do you ever see that one of the guy who put beans in his computer and <laughs> and then yeah. and then he showed the, the pc repair guy and the yeah. guy was like you're not gonna believe when I show you this. <laughs> and the guy was Can like, "What imagine? is it?" Yeah. And he was just like, "These aren't supposed to be in here. These are beans. Like they'd be in your pantry." <laughs> oh, just opening good. up the computer and finding so many beans is such a—it's a harmless, funny prank. <laughs> it doesn't a, hurt anybody. One, yeah. <laughs> I hope they paid that guy well. Give him oh. a nice little tip. But yeah, yeah I mean, beans. Uh, yeah, that guy, the coffee guy, that mentality of just hey. Let me just uh, put this out there and see if anything happens. Maybe nothing will happen, but I'm going to keep doing it. You know, that's what it takes to, to get where you're at right now. I was just talking to that guy I work with, Nick, who uh, is just became a real estate agent again, or he's like sort of working up his way up and passed his tests and all that. And I think he was kind of talking to his boss about like how maybe she was saying like, hey, like here here's some people you could go to to try to find clientele. Like, what about the people you currently work with? Like who maybe there's some people there. And he told me, he was like, he was like, you know what my response to that was? Some guy already got all the nerds I work with. <laughs> some guy named Corey. <laughs> and I'm like thinking, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty true. That's Corey funny. did kind of grab all the nerds yeah. there. Um, I have, I think with the post office, I'm up to like five clients. Yeah. At least. I mean, post office, yeah. Yeah, you hooked me up with a lot of people over there. Yeah, I mean, I'm about to close on number six uh, next week. Nice. Eric uh, of Average. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Their their new place. Yep. So it's another uh, another post office person. Yep. It's funny is because uh, Chris Madden, right, the guy that you worked with, he uh, he thought it was funny because he's like, I got another post office guy. I go, dude, I told you, they're great. Yep. They're Love these post in. office people. They're great. <laughs> he's yeah. like, you got a niche, man. It's always the post office. Yeah. Yep. Ty Kai in the post <laughs> yeah, office. Yeah. The exactly. two wells you can just yeah. keep on tapping. I know, I know. That, that You know what's weird is in 2022, last year, 60% of my business came from Taikai. Yeah. Isn't that a crazy statistic? Wow. 60% came from a a source of Taikai, maybe once removed, but I could always pin it back oh, right. to Taikai, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's who you know, right? And right. And that's like where you spend a lot of your time, so. Right. I got another email. You want me to publicly show that one, too? Yeah, just pop it open. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's, uh, I don't know, it, real estate is just a cool business. I just like that I can connect with people on a different a different aspect and just as, I don't know, it's more fulfilling. To yeah, me it definitely suits you well, I mean, clearly. Yeah, it's it's a cool gig. It's, uh, what is this, five years? Yeah, five and a half, five and a half years I've been doing it, uh, and it's been really cool. I mean, years can be tough, right? Like, it's kind of, like, competitive now, but I've been very fortunate where I've, I have lots of clients, people refer me, so business still keeps moving, and now I'm in a new role, which is, like, you know, a bigger yep. shift in perspective. It's less like find your next client and more, like, recruit, recruit, recruit. What new hire did you get? Retain the people. Show them that they're, they're cared for and loved. So it's, like, a different shift in perspective, but I like that shift in perspective. It keeps things fresh. Yep. Something new. Yep, you're always doing something new. Yeah, always doing something new or keeping the podcast going for something old. <laughs> keeping the the podcast going for... But even here, we're doing something new right now. Yeah, who knows if this is going to work, actually. Who knows uh, what podcast number of a thousand is going to look like. What is that going to look like? It's just going to be... It's chat GPT, yep. Corey, just... Uh, yep, your consciousness fake... digitally uploaded yep. to, the, to the universe itself. Greetings, Michael. How are you doing today? Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> that was a great. Robot. That's gonna be that's gonna be the future of the Corey Cast. Yep. Or it's just me talking to like Albert Einstein's consciousness. Yep. They'll all take shape in your sentient lava lamp. <laughs> well, I, I do. Thanks for doing this. Hopefully, this works. And if it doesn't, then at least we got to talk for an hour. Yeah, man. Uh, Hopefully. We found, hopefully, someone listening out there found something interesting to and Something of value. The chat to. GPT, D&D, uh, real estate. I'm a man of all all talents. Guys, we'll if, cover you, it all. if you're looking to become a real estate agent, I'm looking at you. If you're trying to become a real estate agent out there, see your man, Corey. He already said his goal is to make sure you're loved and appreciated and recruited. And, uh... I uh, know. Oh no! It died. It died. <laughs> it just turned itself off. Damn. Yeah. Well, we have so, the audio. Uh, we have you can audio. Sh- I think from the audio, you can tell I was staring right into your eyes. Yeah, that's a bummer, man. That was going for a while too, and that just shut off by itself. Man. Who knows when it hey, stopped? We tried. We tried our best. That's what. Again, that's what the guinea pigs here for. That's what the guinea pigs here for. <laughs> maybe it's a. Uh, maybe I take a webcam. Maybe I tether it to my my laptop and do it from my laptop make it a webcam and record it from make there. Sense. that might be the best option but we'll see how long we got recorded on that thing maybe it's 20 minutes maybe it's everything but five minutes we'll we'll find out in a sec mike thanks for doing this i appreciate you thanks for having me appreciate you buddy nerd you f- <laughs> go fuck yourself <laughs>